Hello, everyone. Today, we embark on a profoundly important discussion, one that touches the very core of our human experience, navigating through moments of despair so intense that they make us question the very value of living. In these moments, words can be both a bomb and a beacon. The right words can illuminate the path forward and remind us of our resilience, our connections, and our reasons to find hope. Based on scientific evidence and psychological insights, we'll explore five key phrases that can be anchors in the storm, guiding us back to a place of strength. Let's move forward with compassion and understanding, recognizing the power of our words during life's most challenging moments. Ranking Strategy 5, I am not alone in this. Isolation can magnify despair, making burdens feel solely ours to bear. Delving into the essence of our fifth-ranked phrase, I am not alone in this, we touch upon a fundamental human experience, our intrinsic need for connection and the profound impact of social support on our psychological well-being. This simple yet powerful acknowledgement combats one of the most crippling aspects of despair, the sense of isolation. Let's explore, through a lens of scientific inquiry, how recognizing our interconnectedness can serve as a vital lifeline during our darkest moments. Social psychology provides us with a wealth of evidence on the importance of social connections for mental health. Humans are inherently social beings, and our relationships with others play a critical role in our overall well-being. A landmark study published in the American Journal of Sociology by Durkheim in the late 19th century, for example, highlighted the protective effects of social integration against suicide. This foundational work has been supported by countless studies since, demonstrating that strong social ties can buffer against stress, reduce the risk of mental health disorders, and even decrease mortality risk. Further research in the realm of psychology delves into the concept of perceived social support, the feeling that one is cared for, valued, and part of a supportive social network. According to a meta-analysis published in Psychological Bulletin, perceived social support is strongly correlated with positive mental health outcomes, including reduced symptoms of depression and anxiety. This sense of belonging can mitigate feelings of isolation, providing individuals with a psychological safety net that fosters resilience against life's challenges. But why is the sensation of not being alone so impactful? Neuroscientific studies offer insights into our brain's response to social connection. Functional MRI, fMRI, studies have shown that social support can influence brain regions associated with stress and emotional regulation, such as the prefrontal cortex and amygdala. For instance, social support has been associated with reduced activation of the amygdala, a brain region involved in fear and stress responses, suggesting a neurobiological basis for the calming effects of feeling supported. Moreover, the field of positive psychology emphasizes the role of social connections in building psychological resilience, the ability to bounce back from adversity. Resilience is not a trait we are born with but a skill developed through life experiences and interactions. Social support can enhance resilience by providing emotional resources, such as empathy and encouragement, practical assistance, and by modeling coping strategies. This reinforcement of our coping mechanisms can empower us to navigate through periods of despair with a stronger sense of hope and agency. The importance of articulating the feeling I am not alone in this cannot be overstated, especially in moments of acute distress. Vocalizing or even silently acknowledging this sentiment can be a crucial step in seeking out the support we need. It serves as a reminder to ourselves that help is available, whether through friends, family, support groups, or professional counselors. This act of reaching out, in itself, can be therapeutic, breaking the cycle of isolation and initiating the journey towards healing. In practical terms, fostering a sense of connection can be approached in various ways. Engaging in community activities that resonate with our interests can create opportunities for meaningful connections. Seeking out support groups, either in person or online, can provide a sense of solidarity with others who have faced similar struggles. Maintaining open communication with friends and family, sharing our feelings and experiences, can reinforce our support networks. Utilizing technology to stay connected, especially when physical proximity is challenging, can also play a significant role in feeling supported. The recognition that I am not alone in this is more than a mere comfort. It is a powerful affirmation rooted in decades of psychological research and neurobiological evidence. It underscores the protective and restorative power of social connections in our lives, especially in times of despair. By embracing this truth, we can begin to dismantle the barriers of isolation, reach out for support, and rediscover our inherent capacity for resilience. Remember, no matter how solitary the path may seem, our connections to others light the way forward, guiding us back to a place of hope and strength. Ranking Strategy 4, My feelings are valid, but they are not permanent. 
As we explore the fourth-ranked phrase, my feelings are valid, but they are not permanent, we delve into a concept that is both liberating and empowering. This statement serves as a beacon of hope during times of intense emotional turmoil, acknowledging the depth of our current feelings while reminding us of the transient nature of emotions. The scientific evidence supporting this dual acknowledgement is rich and spans across cognitive psychology, neuroscience, and mindfulness studies. First, let's consider the aspect of validating our feelings. Research in clinical psychology underscores the importance of emotional validation in the healing process. Emotional validation involves acknowledging and accepting our feelings without judgment. This practice is crucial, as it can help mitigate the intensity of negative emotions and prevent them from escalating. A study published in the Journal of Cognitive Psychotherapy highlights that individuals who practice self-validation experience lower levels of distress and are better equipped to manage their emotions effectively. By affirming that our feelings are valid, we honor our experiences and create space for self-compassion, which is a vital step toward emotional resilience. However, the second part of the phrase introduces a fundamental truth about emotions, their impermanence. Emotions, by their very nature, are transient. They arise in response to our thoughts, perceptions, and experiences, and then they dissipate. Neuroscience provides insight into this process, showing that the neural activation associated with emotional responses is temporary. For instance, research on the neurobiology of emotions indicates that while certain brain regions, such as the amygdala and prefrontal cortex, become activated during emotional experiences, this activation is not permanent. Over time, as new stimuli are presented or as we shift our focus, the intensity of the emotional response diminishes. Understanding the impermanence of emotions can be particularly helpful when we're engulfed in despair. It offers a perspective shift, a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Mindfulness and meditation practices, deeply rooted in Buddhist psychology and increasingly validated by contemporary psychological research, teach us to observe our emotions without attachment, recognizing them as passing states. This practice can reduce the power of negative emotions over us, as demonstrated in a study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, which found that mindfulness meditation leads to reductions in emotional reactivity. So, how can we apply this knowledge to our lives, especially during moments of intense despair? Here are a few strategies. Practice mindfulness. Engage in mindfulness meditation or simple mindfulness exercises, such as deep breathing and focusing on the present moment, to help create distance between yourself and your emotions. Emotional journaling. Write down your feelings without judgment, acknowledging their presence. Then, remind yourself that these emotions will pass, reflecting on past experiences where you have moved through difficult emotions. Cognitive restructuring. Challenge the permanence of your emotions through cognitive behavioral techniques. Ask yourself questions like, have I felt this way before, and did it last forever? This can help reframe your perspective on the current emotional experience. Seek support. Talking to a trusted friend, family member, or therapist about your feelings can provide both validation and perspective, reminding you that emotions are not fixed states. In embracing the mantra, my feelings are valid, but they are not permanent, we equip ourselves with a powerful tool for navigating the storms of emotional distress. This phrase encourages us to honor our feelings, providing the compassion we need, while also reminding us that no emotion lasts forever. This balance between validation and the recognition of impermanence can be a guiding light through the darkness, leading us toward healing and emotional equilibrium. Ranking Strategy 3. I have the strength to survive this. As we advance to our third crucial phrase, I have the strength to survive this, we tap into the heart of resilience and self-efficacy. This statement is not just an affirmation but a testament to the human spirit's incredible capacity to overcome adversity. The scientific backing for this concept comes from a blend of resilience theory, positive psychology, and studies on self-efficacy, each contributing to our understanding of how believing in our own strength can significantly impact our ability to navigate through life's most challenging moments. Resilience theory suggests that the ability to bounce back from adversity is partly innate but can also be cultivated through life experiences and intentional practice. This theory, widely discussed in the fields of psychology and social work, identifies several factors that contribute to resilience, including a positive attitude, optimism, the ability to regulate emotions, and the capacity to see failure as a form of helpful feedback. Central to these factors is the belief in one's own abilities to overcome challenges, also known as self-efficacy. Albert Bandura, a renowned psychologist, highlighted self-efficacy as the belief in one's ability to influence events that affect one's life and control over the way these events are experienced. 
According to Bandora's research, individuals with high self-efficacy are more likely to take on challenges, persist in the face of adversity, and recover more quickly from setbacks, essentially embodying the sentiment, I have the strength to survive this. Positive psychology further reinforces this concept by focusing on strengths and virtues that enable individuals and communities to thrive. It suggests that focusing on our strengths, rather than solely on correcting weaknesses, can enhance our resilience. Studies within this domain have shown that interventions aimed at identifying and using personal strengths can lead to increases in well-being and decreases in depression symptoms. This approach empowers individuals to draw upon their inner resources, affirming their capability to navigate through tough times. Moreover, the narrative therapy perspective offers an interesting lens on the power of the stories we tell ourselves about our own lives. By framing our experiences as part of a larger narrative where challenges are met with strength and resilience, we can shift our identity towards that of a survivor rather than a victim. This reframing can significantly alter our emotional and behavioral responses to adversity. Implementing the belief I have the strength to survive this into our lives involves several practical steps. Identify past successes. Reflect on previous challenges you've overcome. Recognizing your past successes can bolster your confidence in dealing with current struggles. Develop coping strategies. Equip yourself with a toolbox of coping mechanisms, such as mindfulness, exercise, or talking to someone you trust. Knowing you have strategies in place can enhance your sense of self-efficacy. Set realistic goals. Break down overwhelming situations into manageable tasks. Achieving small goals can boost your confidence and reinforce your belief in your own strength. Seek inspiration. Draw strength from stories of resilience, whether from people you know, historical figures, or characters in books or films. These narratives can serve as reminders of the human capacity to overcome adversity. Practice self-compassion. Be kind to yourself. Recognize that struggling does not imply weakness and that acknowledging the need for help is a sign of strength. By embracing the phrase I have the strength to survive this, we not only affirm our resilience but also activate it. This belief in our own strength is both a shield and a beacon, protecting us from the depths of despair and guiding us toward recovery. It's a reminder that, though the road may be tough, we are equipped with an inner fortitude that can carry us through. Ranking Strategy 2, Help is Available, and it's okay to accept it. Moving on to the second pivotal phrase, Help is Available, and it's okay to accept it. We underscore the significance of seeking support and dismantling the stigma often associated with asking for help. The science behind this notion is grounded in studies across various disciplines, including psychology, social work, and mental health advocacy, which collectively highlight the therapeutic value of support and the critical role of social networks in our overall well-being. The act of seeking help is deeply rooted in the understanding that humans are inherently social beings, and our connections to others play a vital role in our psychological resilience and recovery processes. Research in social psychology has consistently shown that social support, not just the availability of support, but also the perception that support is available, can have a profound impact on mental health. This support can buffer against the effects of stress, reduce the risk of depression and anxiety, and enhance feelings of self-efficacy. Moreover, the process of seeking and accepting help challenges the often culturally ingrained notion that self-reliance is synonymous with strength. This misconception can lead individuals to resist seeking help for fear of being perceived as weak or burdensome. However, evidence from mental health research strongly contradicts this view, demonstrating that recognizing the need for help and taking steps to obtain it are signs of self-awareness and strength. Engaging with mental health professionals, whether through therapy, counseling, or psychiatric care, has been shown to significantly improve outcomes for individuals experiencing emotional distress, depression, or suicidal thoughts. Acceptance and Commitment Therapy ACT, a form of cognitive behavioral therapy, offers valuable insights into the importance of accepting health. ACT emphasizes the concept of psychological flexibility, the ability to contact the present moment fully as a conscious human being, and to change or persist in behavior that serves one's valued ends. Part of this flexibility involves opening oneself up to receiving support, recognizing that doing so can be a step toward living a more value-driven life. Implementing the understanding that help is available, and it's okay to accept it into our lives involves several actionable steps. Acknowledging the need for help. The first step is to recognize and admit to oneself that assistance is needed, which can be a profoundly empowering act. Researching available resources. Identifying resources, whether they are mental health professionals, support groups, or trusted individuals in one's social network, can make the process of seeking help feel more manageable. 
overcoming barriers to help seeking. This may involve challenging personal beliefs about self-reliance or fears of judgment, and recognizing that seeking help is a sign of taking control, not a sign of weakness. Reaching out. Making the first move to contact a professional or confide in someone can be daunting, but it's an essential step towards recovery. Practicing self-compassion. Throughout the process, it's important to treat oneself with kindness and understanding, recognizing that seeking help is an act of self-care. Help is available, and it's okay to accept it as more than just a phrase. It's a crucial acknowledgement in the journey toward healing and resilience. It invites us to lean on the strength of others as we navigate our way through difficulties, reminding us that vulnerability is not a weakness but a courageous step towards recovery. By embracing the availability of support, we open ourselves up to a world of resources and connections that can significantly aid in our healing process. Ranking Strategy 1. There is hope, even if I can't see it right now. Arriving at our most potent affirmation, there is hope, even if I can't see it right now, we touch upon the cornerstone of psychological resilience and recovery, hope. This phrase encapsulates a fundamental principle across therapeutic practices and psychological research, emphasizing the transformative power of hope in overcoming despair, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Hope is not just wishful thinking, it's a dynamic cognitive motivational system, as described by C.R. Snyder and his colleagues in their hope theory. According to this theory, hope involves having goals, goal-directed determination, devising strategies to achieve those goals, pathways thinking, and the motivation to use those strategies, agency thinking. Scientific research has consistently highlighted the role of hope in mental health and well-being. Hope has been associated with lower levels of depression and anxiety, better stress management, and improved outcomes in therapy. Studies have shown that individuals with higher levels of hope exhibit greater psychological resilience, enabling them to cope more effectively with challenges and setbacks. This is partly because hope involves the belief in one's ability to find pathways to desired goals and the motivational energy to embark on those pathways, even when obstacles are encountered. Hope is particularly crucial when facing moments of deep despair. In these times, the future can seem bleak, and the possibility of positive change may appear out of reach. However, embracing the idea that there is hope, even if I can't see it right now serves as a powerful reminder that our current circumstances and feelings are not fixed and that the future holds possibilities for change and healing. This perspective aligns with the concept of psychological flexibility found in acceptance and commitment therapy, ACT, which encourages individuals to hold space for their present experience while moving towards what matters most in their lives, guided by their values and goals. Integrating hope into our lives, especially during moments of despair, involves several practical steps. Setting small, achievable goals. This can help rebuild a sense of efficacy and forward momentum, which are critical components of hope. Identifying past successes. Reflecting on times when you overcame obstacles can bolster your belief in your ability to navigate current challenges. Seeking out stories of resilience. Hearing or reading about others who have faced and overcome adversity can inspire hope and provide a roadmap for coping. Practicing gratitude. Focusing on aspects of your life for which you are thankful can shift your perspective and open your eyes to possibilities and positivity. Connecting with others. Engaging with supportive and understanding people can reinforce the idea that change is possible and that you are not alone in your journey. There is hope, even if I can't see it right now as a declaration of faith in the future and in one's own capacity to influence that future. It acknowledges the pain and uncertainty of the present while affirming that these do not constrain what is yet to come. Hope is both a lifeline and a light, guiding us through the darkness to a place where we can begin to see the dawn of new possibilities. By holding on to hope, we open ourselves to the potential for growth, healing, and transformation, even in our darkest hours. Conclusion. In closing, navigating through moments of deep despair requires courage, compassion, and the willingness to reach out for support. The words we tell ourselves during these times can be a lifeline, offering comfort, connection, and a reminder of our resilience. Remember, it's okay to not be okay, and it's more than okay to seek help. Our discussion today is a testament to the strength inherent in each of us, the strength to face the darkest moments and move towards light and hope. If you are struggling, please reach out to a mental health professional or a crisis service. You are not alone, and with support, you can find your way back to hope and healing. Thank you for joining me in this important conversation.